So where exactly do we find ourselves? Nick Ferrari's pole position. And it's Labour at 397. The Conservatives are 106, including James Cleverley, who's just won in Braintree, the former Home Secretary. The Liberal Democrats are coming in at, at 54, 64, my apologies, my glasses aren't very good, at 64. Uh, and Reform are at four. And we've still got 50, oh, we're nearly there, actually. We've still got 53 to declare. Chris is in Richmond. What's been the highlight of the night for you, Chris? Good morning. Well, I think a couple of things. Jacob Rees-Mogg losing. I remember very well a conversation I had with him two years ago where he said Partygate was fluff. <laughs> I explained I explained about my mother waiting for an ambulance for hours and being stuck outside the hospital. Oh, but anyway, yes, right. um, winning the, the, Lib Dems, the Lib Dems winning Woking, where I grew up. Okay. Um, first time in 114 years that the Lib Dems have ever returned an MP there. Right. Um, That's Clive continue. Jones, I think, isn't it, is it, from memory? Uh, no, the guys, the, what, the, the Lib Dem or the Tories? Oh, mean? oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was the one who won. Go on, so those are the highlights for you. What? When will you think that uh, Rishi, when will you think that, we know what's Rishi, when will you think Keir Starmer's government will get into gear? What do you want to see first? Well, I think education, number one, social oh, really? care, number Yeah, well, definitely. I've got a child with special needs. I mean, there's a, a council, whole, council finances have, um, have been blown open. And there's no money for those. Local government needs a lot more support. Um and we need, and, I, and I, they won't do it, but I want us to get back into the single market. I want my kids that, you know, have got a foreign-born mother to be able to go and travel and, and re- have the freedoms that I had. Um, I don't think it will happen under a Labour government, because I'm afraid that they will be worrying about reform snapping at their heels, as Andrew Marr said not long ago. And I do worry that... Well, they've got 300 and... What is it? Some seats, some, they've not got a lot to worry about, really. No, but... No, but I, 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 I think, think they're think, too shy of 400. I know, but they'll be they'll be worrying about the second places. That is the problem, though. People are always worry about the next stage ahead. So let's see what happens. Hassan's in Kensington. Thank you for hanging on the line. Your uh, reaction this morning? You celebrating? Do you have your head in your hands? Which is it, Hassan? Morning. Uh, I'm uh, quite uh, pessimistic about the results. Oh, are you, sir? Why is that? Uh, yeah. Look, I think if you look at the vote share, uh, uh, Labour got 34% of the vote share, uh, barely uh, an increase over what uh, Corbyn achieved in 19, well below what Corbyn achieved in 17, but they've been rewarded by whatever 60, 63% of the sh- uh, of the seats. And I think that sort of shows how weak our first-past-the-post political system can be. Um, if you look at voter turnout... It does give you a winner, though. I could refer you to European countries where they have other systems, and sometimes, well, it takes weeks to decide who's actually won. Is that, a, is that one bonus of our system? Look, you might call it a bonus, but I think uh, handing over absolute power to somebody who has 34% of the vote is also not fair. And our politicians should be should get used to the idea that they have to reach out across the aisle and work with people. That's what real life is. You have to work with a wider group of people. So having lopsided majorities and calling it stability is not uh, the right, uh, I think, answer. I think the other thing which is very interested, interesting is in, uh, I'm interested in is that the voter turnout has come down a lot. I know. Seven and a half, seven and a half percent versus 19, but that was a winter election. And 10 percent... So it's not seven, it's 59.8 percent currently. Um, Hassan? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, and in two thousand and nine, seventeen, which was the summer election, it was nearly sixty nine percent. I see. So, yeah, I see. Sorry. So, yeah. so, it has it has come down a lot, and I think if you look at where the challenge is going to come from, I think with uh, Farage and and the right wing running rampant, I think I'm very worried that uh, Labour will continue to get okay. dragged to the right. centre. John, you want to talk about reform? Is that right? Good morning. Well. Morning. Well done for an early start, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so so uh, the Labour landslide is amazing, right? But Huge. I think the really worrying thing that your previous caller just said is the turnout is low. Yeah. Like in some places, as low as 50%. And I suspect those people who have not voted are disillusioned with politics in, in general, or they couldn't come to terms with voting for reform. So my my vote my my worry is that there are huge swings to reform, and if Labour don't pull their finger out in the next 100 days to a year, the country is going to be in the grips of the far right in 2029, and I I won't be here. I'll move. I'll take my kids and my wife, and we'll move somewhere else. Where, because that where that, would that 40, where would you go? I don't I don't know yet. It's four years away, but I've got a plan because that because that 40 odd percent will come back, and probably at least half will go for for reform. Conservatives aren't going to recover in this time. And they won't get a lot of votes from this part of the electorate when the time comes. 
um, Conservatives saying that they wish they had more time and the election should have been later in the year. That's ridiculous. They've had 14 years. Simon's in Basingstoke. Well, you want to reflect on what to face is secure. Is that right? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Yes, I do. I, I, I feel terribly sorry for the man. Uh, he's facing a disastrous economy, uh, tumultuous changes around the world. He did want the I job, think... Simon. He did want the job. Uh, so did Gordon Brown. And I don't know about you, but I always, I always, I never liked Gordon Brown. I, I never forgive, forgave him for selling 400 tons of gold at twenty two hundred and fifty dollars an ounce. Yes, but I did feel sorry for him because he, he, he wanted that job so much. Yet he was so ill-equipped to do it. And I think the Labour policies. I do not see any Labour policy that will give growth to this country. Well, that comes back to whether we, of course, gave them enough analysis. How are you feeling this morning, Steve? Yeah, um, well, a little, little bit annoyed after what, last why, night. Why are you annoyed, sir? Um, purely because I went to vote last night at my local polling station to find out that I couldn't vote reform. Why? Because there wasn't a candidate. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry. They hadn't, they hadn't fielded a candidate, right? Correct. Yeah. What and there was you... a lot of people, a lot of people walking away with with stunned faces while they couldn't vote. What did you do? Just crossed all the boxes and voided my vote completely. <laughs> Why would you have wanted to vote for reform? Because this country needs a change radically. And what? And just again, just I mean that's what we've been hearing, by the way, from Keir Starmer. So if you wanted change, he would say, "Have you not been listening, Steve? I've been talking change for the last six and a bit weeks." No, he's just like the rest of them, mate. Honestly. Okay. You need you need someone with. So um, j- j- just break down a little bit more. What is the change that you want? Getting the country back on its feet. Again, and one, one, and one way, one way is um, again he solve, would say again he would again he would say but I've got a chancellor who's got the confidence of much of the city of London. We're going to go for growth. We're going to build growth. That's what Sakir Starmer would have said to you, uh, Steve, with your vote. Yeah, but it's going to be growth, growth with our tax money. We want to stop spending our tax money where it's not needed. Um, five million a week on illegal immigrants and put that into the country. Steve, thank you. I'm not that I was responsible. I'm sorry you weren't able to vote. It's done down to me. I don't feel the candidates, but I'm very sorry you felt you weren't able to exercise in democracy. And I completely understand why you voided your paper as a result.